Welcome to Cinema 40, I'm Jesse, and as I promised in my previous tutorial, Particles, this tutorial will be dedicated to thinking particles. So let's get started. Pretty much what we have to do here is create a null object, or we could create any object, but for the sake of this, a null object is uh, the best that we can do. And then with this null object selected, right click on it, go to Cinema 40 tags and go all the way down to the bottom, Expresso. Once you select that, this little x-ray grid will, uh, sorry, not x-ray, This just this normal grid will pop up. I got distracted by the x here. And basically what thinking particles are is a really good way to create your own particle system. So instead of doing all the particles that I demonstrated in my previous tutorial, you're going to be creating your own particles from scratch. So to do this, what we have right here is our blank grid, and we're going to do node-based programming. So don't worry if you don't understand what that means, I'm just going to get you guys started. So first of all, let's right click somewhere on this grid and go to new node. Now you see a lot of these uh, little tabs. Don't worry about all of them, just thinking particles. And of course, behind thinking particles is a whole set of new tabs. And here let's get started with, well, we want to create particles. So what we need is a generator to generate the particles. And I've played around with a few of these, and the only one that really has good startup effects is P Storm. This is probably closest to the emitter particle uh, that's built into Cinema 40. So if I create this without changing anything, and I can close this window, and I click play, what we get is already particles being emitted. And if you're worried about getting that grid back that I just got rid of, double click on this little icon and you have your Expresso editor back in the view. So now let's get started and look at PStorm. Now I just clicked the top here, PStorm, and I'll just close this. So we can look at the attributes. First of all, there's the node. The node just uh, determines the seed of the particles, how they're being spawned. And basically this means that every time I click play, it'll be the exact same thing over and over. But the moment I change the seed, so at a four at the end, it'll be a different uh, generation of particles. The important stuff though is under parameter. So first we get to type circle or rectangle, that's pretty straightforward. And you notice it doesn't update until I click play. So right here, we now have a square. I'm going to keep it as a circle. Beneath that we have birth type, there's count, rate, and shot. Now count, I figured this out through some experimentation, what count does is in the lifetime, so 90 frames of its life, there will be 100 total particles. So by the time I reach 50 or, or 52 uh, frames, we have 52 particles. By the time I reach 90, we have all 100 particles. What rate does is it sends out an X amount of particles per whatever, per the rate. And in this case, the rate is uh, 30 frames per second, so uh, 30 frames. So in 30 frames, there will be 100 particles, and 100 more in 60 frames, and 100 more at 90 frames. And you can, of course, change this to 10, or if you really want to see that it only does X amount of particles per second, oops, let's just get this started again, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. Shot, what shot does is it sends out X amount of particles per frame. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on and so forth. Or if I want to get a ton of them in here, send 100 per frame. And this is interesting because if you get them pretty well spaced, if there's a high enough speed, you can actually see kind of a line in between each of the frames if you get them going at a fast speed. Right now, it just looks like a cluster of a lot of particles. So I'm going to stick with count, but I'm going to change the count to 200 just to have a few more particles, so we have a little more to work with. Life, I've already explained that. Life is just how long the particles live. If I set this to yeah, 20 frames, for example, we get 20 frames and then they die at 20. So these are leftovers, so they, all the particles die at 20 frames. Now life variation, if I do 100%, so we can see this, what 100% does is all the particles will die at 20 frames, or some of the particles will die anywhere between 0 and 20 frames. The, it'll never go over, so it's always between 0 and whatever the number we have. So I'll set 90 and 0. Speed, well, you can probably guess what that is, how fast it goes. And same with speed variation, anywhere between 0 and 100%, uh, anywhere between 0 and the top speed. 
for 100% variation. Uh, we have size of the particles, size variation, don't have to worry about this. A field of view, FOV, X and Y. What this is, is the angle that they're going at. You notice that they're not all constrained straight forward in this circle. So if I go to a side view uh, front, you'll notice that the particles way out here. Now let's change this to zero and zero. And you'll see right away that all the particles just exist within this circle, even though they're all moving forward. Uh, X size, Y size, this is the size of the circle, or if you have a rectangle, the rectangle. So if I change X to 200 and press update, uh, you can see that the it becomes an ellipse. The X dimension becomes 200 centimeters long. The distance is how far from the origin all the particles spawn. So if I say 100 centimeters or one meter, they will all start spawning right here. So you'll see all the particles spawn 100 centimeters away from the origin of the emitter. And let's change that back to zero. Again, distance variation, same kind of thing. Spin, we won't be able to see that because these are just little dots, uh, but basically the spin on the particles and then the spin type. So now that we know all the basic stuff of this particle generation, let's get started. First of all, if I select the null object, and I'll drag this down a little bit again, and I move it, and click play, the emitter doesn't actually move with the null object. So let's attach the emitter to the null object and the null object rotation. So to do this, double click. And the first thing that we need to do is drag the null object, click and drag somewhere into here. So we've got the null object and I'm just going to make it a little, little longer. And now what we have here is this blue bar and this red bar on all of them. And the blue is the input, the red is the output. So what we want to do is output the position of the null object and the rotation. Now, if you click left click on this, you'll see a lot of little tags that seem pretty familiar. For the position, what you want to do is go to coordinates, global position and global position. If you just want to do X, Y and Z, you can do that, but we want all of them. For the rotation, you might think coordinates, global rotation. For some reason, this doesn't work. So what you need is actually global matrix. So now we have both of these. And now what we do with the P storm is left click on this blue icon here. And what I want is I always uh, forget which one it is emitter alignment. Alright, so let's drag this so we can see this. So global position goes to emitter position, global matrix goes to emitter alignment. And you'll notice, if I drag, I click and drag, and it turns green, the line turns green when it works when it says, okay, this is acceptable. And also, if you don't like the line, you can just click on it, and it'll delete the line. And now, if I move my object and if I rotate it, we'll do two and one and click play. You'll notice that both the angle and the position have changed of the emitter and I'm going to undo that. All right. So now let's, let's do some fun to this editor or to this emitter. Excuse me. What I want to do is let's say, let's add gravity actually, because that's kind of important. Or in this case, I'm going to call it more of a force because as you'll see in a moment, it's not so much gravity as it is a force. So again, right click, new node, thinking particles, and this time we'll go to dynamic. I'm going to use two of the things in dynamic. And the first one is P gravity. Now that I have P gravity here, and I'm just going to drag it op open so we can see it better. And I click play, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Nothing actually happens for two reasons. One, there's nothing assigned to P gravity. So it doesn't know what am I going to affect? What particle am I going to affect with gravity? And two, the P gravity, if you look over here in the attributes, actually needs an object to align to. So to do this, let's create another null object. We can create again, any kind of object, but null kind of works because it's invisible. And drag the null into the object. Now you'll notice my Expresso editor is covering it up, but the null object, and I'm going to close this again for convenience, the gravity object now has actually sh uh, changed from just a little dot to a square with an arrow. The arrow tells you what direction the gravity is pointing in. So let's open up our editor again. And now we need to attach this. Now you might think to attach it to the P storm and the, the null or something like that. But actually, let's create a new node. And what we're going to use is the TP initiator, toilet paper initiator or thinking particles. And we're going to use P pass. 
and drag this down and you'll notice p pass here says all and I'm just going to quickly align both of these and we're done. I'm going to close this out but remember that it says all here. The reason it says all is it affects all the particles and now I want you to see that if you go into simulate and thinking particles, thinking particle settings, we have a few little settings here to work with. One, if I click play, here it shows you how many particles are, are being rendered at any moment. The max particle here is just a setting of how many maximum particles you can have. So let's say I change this to 20. And okay, there we go, it'll start running. So 20 particles will be shot out at any time and then stopped for the rest of the duration. So let's change this back to 100,000. And the other good thing this, this max particle is for is some computers might not be able to handle a ton of particles. So say you have maybe 20 million particles, just to be really crazy. Not everybody's computer will be able to handle that. So max particles is really useful. Particle groups here is the thing that the all comes from. So if I right click and add, I can add a subgroup and say I can set it so that it only adjusts something in the group one instead of all. And of course we can change the colors. So for example, bright red and let me delete the group one and press play. And you have really, it's really distracting color, but it's bright red. I'm going to change that back to yellow because it's bothering my eyes. All right, so now we all have all that set up and you'll notice I've been pressing play, but no gravity, nothing really has happened. Actually, you can see that the particles are moving faster and faster. Now let's, let's keep uh, pressing play and I'm going to rotate this down. And you can see that the particles are properly adjusted for gravity. And if you want to have a lot of fun, you can point it backwards and the particles kind of bend back. And you'll notice that it doesn't matter that this is up here and not right in front of it. The gravity is going all in one direction. So let's point this back down and do one more thing with this gravity. Uh, let me press pause, double click this and select gravity. You'll notice, and I'm going to shrink this window down. You notice that we have a type planar and spherical. And we have the strength, which is, as you can expect, you can also have negative strength, which I'll show in a moment. Decay, I guess distance decay, and you don't have to worry about the last two. I, I found that they, you don't really need them to create gravity. But let's switch to spherical and change our gravity to something kind of strong. Now if I click play, you'll notice that our gravity object has become a sphere. And the spherical gravity is actually kind of like a planetary gravity. So the particles get sent around and they basically their path is almost like a comet being shot around this planet and being bent around. A neat thing that you can also do is negative gravity and this is where uh, the sphere kind of comes in use. It's being repelled now. And kind of one of the cool things that I like about this is if I select the object and uh, let's just change the coordinates and rotation back to zero for convenience and move it just out and let's start again. We can get, if I make the gravity not too strong, so here you can see kind of this really big reverse scattering. But if I get the gravity just with the right strength, it kind of acts as almost like a diffuse element. So it shoots the particles out into kind of a wider stream. So that's all the basics of Expresso Editor and you can add more stuff. For example, I'm just going to really quickly show you something else that's, that I really like. Uh, let's create another P-Pass. And this time let's create, for dynamics, let's create a deflector. So this is a way to make your particles deflect an object. So this time I'm not actually going to create a null object. I'm going to create a cube. Select your deflector, drag the cube into the, the object. And now what you will see, uh, let me delete the gravity. Hopefully everything will work. I've never tried it like that. Uh, what you will see is that uh, particles will be deflected. Of course, they're going into the object and we can actually see what's going on with lines. So you can see this little white box right here. This is the deflector object. So I've got to double click on this and select deflector. Now let's change the size to match the actual cube. So 200 by 200 by 200. And now suddenly we have a cube that's deflecting and we can change our render settings appropriately. And this is kind of fun because you can really mess around with the, the nice angles here and let's see if we can move it closer. 
and you can really kind of get that bouncing effect going on all the directions. So that's just kind of a neat thing. So anyway, have fun, play around with it, and I hope you've enjoyed this rather long tutorial.